You may be aware that in the entire volume of scriptures, only the book of Esther does not mention the name of God specifically. We know, however, that the demonstration of God's power and will through divine providence is rich and present throughout the book. Like the book of Esther, it might seem to you that God is absent from the pages of the story of your life. Perhaps as a result of the pain and frustration you may be experiencing at the moment. But this assumption is far from the truth. The providence of God is tangible in the story of your life as it was in that of Esther and Mordecai. Although Jeremiah was not quick to realize it, God told him in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What is true about God for knowing Jeremiah is true of you also. God is with you, and he is on your case. Today, I want to speak to you about the God who is thy keeper. This phrase is taken from one of the most popular psalms in the whole of scriptures, Psalm 121. In verses 5 to 8, it says, The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Brethren, the Lord who is thy keeper is the one able to preserve you from all evil. From where you and I stand, which is from a position of very limited view of life, we cannot fully appreciate how much danger and evil we face on a daily basis. While urging us not to worry about tomorrow, Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 tells us each day has enough trouble of its own. This is so true. But we thank the Lord Almighty who is always looking out for us and always acting in our best interest. In the book of Esther, we learn of the hatred Haman had for Mordecai and how he was consumed with a passion to destroy Mordecai. Esther chapter 5 verse 9 records that Haman went out that day happy and in high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. You see, Haman's frustration over Mordecai was so intense that he told a group of his friends that all the riches and privileges he, Haman, had gave him no satisfaction as long as he could still see that Jew, Mordecai, sitting at the king's gate. It was at this point that Haman's close advisors suggested to him what he could do to rid himself of the problem that Mordecai was. Esther chapter 5 verse 14. His wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Have a gallows built, 75 feet high, and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then go with the king to the dinner and be happy. Talk about a grand conspiracy of the wicked. This suggestion delighted Haman, and he had the gallows built. Little wonder, therefore, that the Bible warns us about how desperately wicked the heart of men is. But let's reflect on these events for a moment. Earlier, Mordecai had asked for Esther's help. He wanted her to use her position as queen to appeal to the king for the lives of the Jews to be spared, contrary to the plan Haman had devised against them. Queen Esther had obliged to the request of Mordecai, even at great risk to her own life. Esther chapter 4, verses 15 to 17. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. You see, saints, while Haman, the adversary, 
was thinking his deadly thoughts and making his evil plans, Mordecai had other things on his mind, godly things. Mordecai was zealous for the well-being of the people of God and for matters pertaining to God's kingdom, as should each and every one of us. The truth of our situation is that like Mordecai, we can never be sure of what heart and mind condition the so-called friends or acquaintances around us have towards us. This is perhaps why the songwriter says, Christians seek not yet repose, thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. Here you are, like Mordecai, hoping for deliverance and well-being, while Haman, like your adversary, is plotting entrapment and harm for you. Thankfully, it is in vain that the adversary plans and plots against you because you have the Almighty God who is thy keeper. We are told, and we believe it, that he will not suffer thy foot to be moved, that he who keepeth thee will not slumber. As a matter of fact, he that keepeth the whole nation of Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. What a good and great God. And you thought he was absent in the pages of your life. How wrong can you be? For while Haman, like your detractors and adversaries, was thinking his evil plans, which were unknown to an unsuspecting Mordecai, God was at work doing what he does best for his own giving divine cover and protection. It will be well with you. Like Mordecai, you keep on taking good care of God's people and God's business, and he will keep on taking care of all that concerns you. This was true in the case of Mordecai. In chapter 6 of the book of Esther, we are told that God sees the king sleep, and because he was unable to sleep, he commanded to be brought to him the book of records of the chronicles, which they did and which they read to him. The king discovered from the records how Mordecai had saved his life in the past by reporting an assassination attempt on the king's life, but was yet unrewarded for this commendable act. The king made up his mind to correct this oversight and give deserved honor and recognition to Mordecai. My brother and my sister, this God, who is thy keeper, moves in mysterious ways, his wonders truly to perform. God used the sleeplessness of the king to bring about the exaltation of Mordecai. He can and will deploy any means to fulfill his responsibility towards you. Know this for a fact, day and night, God watches over those who are faithful. Let us remain confident of the promise that he shall preserve us from all evil. Beloved, our God who is the shade upon thy right hand shall preserve your soul. We will celebrate your triumph over every plan and every counsel of the wicked ones towards you. Amen. My name is B. E. Ajala and I thank you for watching and for partnering with me in this task of making ready a people prepared for the Lord. Thank you and God bless you.